In 2011, a virus kills 99% of the population, and a scientist by the name of Trevor Goodchild develops a cure. The 5 million survivors live in Bregna, the last city on Earth. The Goodchild dynasty rules for 400 years. In a surreal German expressionist-style futuristic world, a bizarre dystopian community comprising of mutants, clones, and robots has developed after the cure of the virus known as Monica and Bregna. Aeon Flux, a secret agent from the city of Monica, lies in bed, her voice monologuing the state of Bregna. Some call Bregna the perfect society, some call it the height of human civilization, but others know better. The Goodchilds built Bregna to ensure the survival of the human race. They built the relicle, a memorial to remind people of what they survived, and they built walls to protect the city and told the community that outside, nature has retaken the world. But the real problems lay inside the walls as people are haunted by sorrows that they can't explain and are disappearing from the streets. The government denies these crimes and continues to provide for the people as long as they stay quiet. Aeon belongs to a group of rebels who refuse to stay quiet and trade their freedom for security. This group calls themselves the Monikans. Aeon heads out to the city and meets a fellow Monikin and kisses him, taking a small sphere-like object from his mouth to hers. When she swallows it, it transports her mind to a place that seems like a control center where she accepts her mission. Her handler tells her that they have a mission for her, as they want her to sabotage Good's child surveillance facility as it's their greatest tool against the Monikins. She tells her that her entrance would be noticed, but they would help her by briefly disabling their interior lawn. After accepting the mission, Aeon heads to the market to see her sister Una. Una is excited to have her sister finally come over to dinner, and Aeon sadly informs her that she might not be able to make it to dinner tonight, which saddens her sister. Una doesn't approve of what her sister does and voices her concern. Aeon tells her that she's trying to help the people and disappears into the crowd before her sister says anything else. That night, Aeon heads to the facility to execute her mission, and she kills and maims her way inside, and then strategically lowers herself from the opening on the roof. She drops the device that she brought with her into a pool that records everything in the city, clearing everything. After completing her mission, Aeon heads to her sister's house, but finds out that she'd been murdered inside her house. She watches as her sister's boyfriend is taken away, while the guards tell him that this was how the good child regime deals with Monikins. Aeon is very devastated by the loss, and it gives her further fuel and drive to take down her enemies. A year after the tragedy, Aeon wakes up after having a dream about her departed sister. She then receives a call, informing her that her handler is ready to see her. She is then told that she has another mission, and this is a mission that Aeon has been waiting for for quite some time. They had intercepted information that would allow them to penetrate security, and her handler orders Aeon to eliminate Goodchild. Aeon makes a request that a fellow Monacan by the name of Sathandra accompany her while making her way into the Citadel. We then see her waiting for Sathandra, a mutated agent with hands for feet, to arrive. Together they make it through the trap set up at the lawn, dismantling the devices as they go. Once they make it through, Aeon finds an opening to the citadel and sneaks inside. She follows the map placed in her arms to try and find Trevor Goodchild, but it leads her to a dead end. She then disarms a guard and he uses his headset to find Trevor while he was giving a speech. As she points her gun at him, he is shocked, but upon looking at her face, he recognizes her and calls her Catherine and suddenly, a rush of memories fill her head of the two kissing. She lowers her guard long enough for the guards to hit her over the head, rendering her unconscious. She wakes up in a brick cell with no way of escape, and one of the walls turns translucent, and she sees Trevor standing there with his guards. Aeon asks him why he called her by that name, but he ignores the question and asks her if she knew him, which she assures him that she doesn't. Through the vent, she calls out to one of the tiny devices that she had set all around the citadel as she made her way inside, and she waits for it to destroy one of the walls, creating an opening for her to escape. Orin, Trevor's brother, secretly speaks with one of his agents, asking her how Aeon failed to kill Trevor. She assures him that Aeon was the best that the Monikans had, and that it was the first time that she ever failed to complete a mission. His agents tell him that it would be impossible to trace it back to him, which is comforting for Orin. He views the image that the camera had caught of Aeon, and is shocked by the person that he saw. Aeon surprises Claudius, her sister's ex-boyfriend at his workplace, and accuses him of working for the same people that killed Una. He tells her that her sister died because of of her because the government assumed that she was a monokin. He tells her that Trevor is just trying to help because something was wrong with the people living in the city, and he explains that something had gone wrong when they cured the industrial virus, 
making a different threat spring up in its place. Aeon gives Claudius a sample of the water that Trevor had provided her in her cell and asks him what was inside of it. After checking, he tells her that it was a message and that she would have to drink it to receive it. In private, Aeon drinks the water and receives a message from Trevor telling her that it wasn't safe to talk out in the open and that she would know where to find him. She then heads to Trevor's home where she was sure that he would be and sneaks inside. When she finds him, she accuses him of killing her sister and he tells her that he doesn't know who she was and apologizes. They get close to each other and are overwhelmed by the feelings that she couldn't explain and she kisses him and they eventually spend the night together. In the morning, Eon tries to sneak out of Trevor's house but accidentally finds an opening on the floor that leads her to his laboratory. In between his test tubes, she finds a picture of herself and suddenly she's attacked by an assassin who she manages to escape from by using the vents. When told about Eon's escape, Trevor orders Freya that she can't be harmed because he wants her alive. Orin and the council gather for a meeting after finding out that Trevor had slept and chosen to be with a Monacan agent. The council deem what he has done as treason and decides that he needs to be removed. Eon, finding new information on the recording device that she'd taken from Trevor's lab, decides to break into the relicle. Inside she finds out that her sister's murder was deliberate and that her new clone had been successfully reassigned with the name Sasha. Meanwhile, Satander reports that Eon had failed her mission and had betrayed the resistance. The handler announces to all active agents that Eon is now considered a threat and must be hunted down and killed. Orin heads to Trevor's room, trying to arrest him, but he finds it empty. Trevor had gone to the relicle looking for Eon and had found out that she went looking for her sister. He tries to go through all of Una's information and is shocked to find out that all of the members belonging to her test group had been killed by the police, all authorized by his brother. Eon breaks into the family home her sister had been assigned to and she asks to see her. She finds her sister, now only an infant, sleeping in her crib. She picks her out of the crib and holds her close when suddenly, Trevor appears at the door and Aeon realizes that everyone was a clone who are actually a copy of themselves. Trevor explains that when they cured the virus, it had an unexpected effect and made everyone sterile. And he and his brother had used the DNA of the last generation and recycled it until they could find a cure. And so for the last seven generations, he and his brother had cloned and thought themselves so they could keep trying to find a solution. He tells Eon that Una was part of his test subjects who were successful in natural impregnation, but his brother had killed her to keep things as they were. Eon and Trevor then tell the couple to get away with baby Una before they're attacked by Orin's people. Trevor hit on the shoulder while in action before Eon takes them out. The two of them run from the compound and escape inside one of the trains, and knowing that nowhere is safe for them, they hide out inside one of the city tunnels. Eon then digs into Trevor's shoulders with her fingers and pulls out the bullet that was inside and uses a special monocon patching material to close the wound. Once he feels better, he tells her that Orin would try and destroy everything that he managed to achieve, so they need to find a way to stop him. After sneaking into one of the armories, Trevor manages to convince a lieutenant and his men to help them, and he tells the men that they need weapons to try and get back inside the citadel. While they're moving through the tunnels under the citadel, Eon stops and shows him the picture of her that she'd taken from his lab, asking for an explanation. Trevor tells her that she was his wife, and that she died during the pandemic, but he couldn't bring her back and each time he cloned himself, he thought his younger self about her, and she was an idea that he was trying to keep alive, but when he saw her, he remembered and felt everything about her. When he tells her all this, all of Eon's old memories from her past life flood back, and on the other side of the citadel, Eon's Monacan teammates, including Satandra, plan to find and assassinate her. Trevor notices burning paper fluttering up ahead and hurries toward it only to find his library along with his labs in flames. Freya, trying to protect his work, had been killed by the door. Eon tells him that they have to keep moving before the guards find them, and Trevor suggests that they leave the city and find a way to live in the wilderness. But she tells him that there was one more thing to do before they left. She explains her plan to destroy the relicle, but Trevor disagrees, telling her that he's not sure that he can find the cure again, and that cloning is all that the human race has. Eon convinces him that every time they're brought back, the memories of their past becomes more prominent, and she tells him that people are meant to die, and that it was the only thing that made living worth it. On their way, they meet Orin, who reveals to him that women started getting pregnant outside of his experiment, but he had to kill them to keep their way of life. While Orin speaks about the beauty of the lifestyle that they created, an army starts surrounding them. Trevor confronts Orin about his wife's death, who confesses that he had her DNA destroyed because he felt like she was holding him back. Aeon communicates with Sathandra through their secret link and convinces her that she wasn't a traitor and that everything she was doing was for the people of the city. Sathandra shoots Orin and orders the others to cover Trevor in 
Eon. Satandra and her team start shooting at the soldiers, dropping each of them one by one. While trying to get away, Trevor is shot on the leg and collapses, and although her teammates got killed, Satandra and Eon manage to take out all the guards before Orin blows up the ledge Satandra was standing on and she falls and dies instantly. He tries to shoot Eon but is tackled by Trevor before he manages to make the kill shot, and then he points his gun at Trevor's chest but is shot in the head by Eon. Finally safe, Eon makes her way to the relicle where she meets the keeper who'd saved her DNA when Ord had ordered it to be destroyed. He tells her that he saved her because he knew her strength would help Trevor achieve his goals, and Eon tells the keeper that she had to destroy everything and he agrees. She hurries out of the relicle after setting up bombs all around it and slides down to safety as it explodes, crashing and breaking the wall of the city. And Trevor and Eon finally reunite, knowing that a bright future awaits the human race and that it would be expecting a whole new generation.